Hello, welcome to this video of Mystical Science Stuff. This is the next lesson in the pathogens and diseases topic for GCSE Biology, and we're going to start with a question today. What do you think it is that links all of these diseases? Have a look at them. We've got cellulitis, boils, folliculitis, and impetigo. Now, it shouldn't take a genius to work out what the answer is. If you've looked at the title of this video, they are all diseases caused by bacteria. Okay, they're all bacterial diseases. So to give you an idea of what each one of these is, so cellulitis being a painful red infection, um, warm to the touch, well, commonly it's from the legs, but it can be absolutely anywhere. Folliculitis, as it sounds like, folliculitis is an infection of hair follicles that causes a swollen red bump. Uh, impetigo, generally seen in children, is oozing sores, that kind of stuff. Uh, large blisters, as you saw in the picture there, and then boils, uh, happen if you've got deep skin infections often coming on from folliculitis they are all bacterial diseases so today's lesson is basically another nice short one the bacterial diseases you have to know and there are only two stipulated on your syllabus okay so we're going to go through these very very quickly uh, shouldn't take too long at all so this is the spec as you can see the two on here are salmonella and gonorrhea those are the ones that are specified on the specification and we're going to go through each of those in turn what they are how they're caused how they're prevented and how they're treated so before we do that we're going to do a little bit of revision and the differences between viruses and bacteria and how they cause diseases and when they're working as pathogens um, you then gonna have some tasks to do afterwards in terms of completion of uh, various pages of the white workbook so have a go at this Pause the video here, have a look at this. It should be nice and easy bit of pathogens revision. The words are at the bottom. See if you can put them in the slots from one to six. So pause the video now. Okay, hope you've done that. Right, that should be nice and straightforward. So we'll go through the answers. Here they are. So pathogens are microorganisms that cause infectious disease. Those pathogens might be viruses, bacteria, protists, or fungi. They may infect plants or animals and can be spread by direct contact by water or by air. There are various other methods as well, but those are some of them. Bacteria and viruses reproduce rapidly inside the body and bacteria may produce poisons or toxins. We're going to come back to that in a little while that damage tissues and make us feel ill. Uh, viruses living and reproduce inside the cells, causing cell damage. Right, so just as a recap, now you should have covered this before, about the different ways these pathogens make us sick. So on the right hand side there, we've got our viruses, which we've discussed in previous lessons. The way they make us ill, they actually get inside your cell, hijack your cells, make your cells make more of them, burst out, destroying your cells and going on to infect other cells. So the classic sore throat kind of feeling is from burst and ruptured cells. Bacteria, on the other hand, are bigger than that so sometimes they can go inside your cells but usually the way they they um, cause problems is they reproduce rapidly on on your cells or in your tissues consuming your cells consuming your tissues for nutrients and some of them produce toxins now usually those toxins are there to fight each other not to deliberately to do you harm but those toxins can also have an effect on us really famous one being cholera toxin that cholera bacteria produce in your gut uh, and that stops chlorine moving in and out of cells correctly and causes all the symptoms of cholera. So bacteria colonize tissues, take over and consume cells and produce toxins. That's the mark in the exam. Viruses get inside your cells, use your cells to reproduce and burst out. OK, so let's get into the bacteria you have to know about. Only two this week, as was three last week. We've got Salmonella enteriditis. So Salmonella commonly known as the bacteria is actually Salmonella enteriditis, that's its proper name. Um, you've got an artist's impression up there of what it looks like. It's a long rod-shaped bacteria, as you can see, generally motile, so it's got those flagella we've talked about before, um, and it causes food poisoning. You probably know this. If you've done any sort of food tech or any sort of food hygiene work, you know this, that commonly Salmonella can come from things like undercooked chicken is particularly bad for it, and dairy products but really it can come from any um, under prepared or, or contaminated food or food preparation areas that come from surfaces or utensils that aren't sterilized properly symptoms well standard food poisoning abdominal cramps vomiting and diarrhea 
Um, you can see there you can swab for um, salmonella so you can have a look at what it looks like. That salmonella makes these sort of light pink colonies on standard agar jelly. And if you don't remember the bit about agar jelly, go back and watch the uh, agar jelly and moving microbes lesson it's previously done. Now, preventing it, it's not rocket science. Uh, in the UK, all our chickens vaccinated, our flocks are vaccinated against um, salmonella, and we practice good food hygiene. That's basically what you need to do. Now, in your kitchens, you should be practicing good hygiene, food hygiene yourself, and any restaurant that you go to or food uh, food serving place will be inspected and have a food hygiene rating that goes from naught to five. Again, we have uh, legal powers to shut places down that are likely to contaminate you. If you do get it, usually it'll sort itself out in a small amount of unpleasant time where you're vomiting and have diarrhea. But if you do need to treat it because it is a bacteria, you can treat it with antibiotics. However, as we're going to come back to more in this lesson, antibiotic resistance is a bigger and bigger problem as we uh, as we use antibiotics more and more. They are adapting to overcome our, our uh, medicines. So second one is gonorrhea that's on the syllabus. The bacteria we've got here is Neisseria gonorrhea. Um, it causes gonorrhea. That's the name of the disease. It's had various other slang names throughout history. The clap being um, one of the most famous ones that you might hear referenced in TV film literature. Um, common sources, of course, well, you get it from unprotected sex with a sufferer. Uh, it can pass this on. And uh, the symptoms of it are a, pain, a painful urination and a green-yellow discharge from the genitals where the bacteria has colonized the genital tract. And it works just the same in men and women. Okay, And obviously prevention methods are barrier contraception, i.e. condoms, things that are going to stop anything moving from one person to another. If you do have it, then antibiotics are the treatment. However, it's been noted in the media and medical press an awful lot that gonorrhea is becoming ever more resistant to antibiotics, creating strains that are being referred to as super gonorrhea. Okay? Now, obviously, we're not going to go into this too much detail because it's the biology lesson uh, on the biology of the microbes there, not a PSHE lesson. Okay? Uh, as you can see, you've got the artist's um, impression up there of what the gonorrhea bacteria looks like. So this one is a spherical, coccus-shaped uh, bacteria rather than the rod shaped one that's sort of salmonella and it makes these white streaks on a particular type of agar it's called blood agar that you grow um, gonorrhea on okay so that's the two that you need to know and really there isn't much more in the part of the syllabus than that so bacteria are living cells in favorable conditions they multiply rapidly we know that we've done that through revision once inside the body they release poisons or toxins that make us feel ill again that is revision the new bits are the actual diseases you have to be able to name and state what they do and what they're like, and that's salmonella food poisoning and gonorrhea. Okay, so very, very straightforward, easy one this week. Make sure you go away and learn that, and particularly if you can, the spelling of gonorrhea. I know it's a pain and I can't do it, but if you can get it right, please, please do. Okay, so really short one today. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.